This is downtown Seattle. And only a few miles away, down here in the foreground, is Longfellow Creek. It's a stream that winds through a small pocket of green space, surrounded by parking lots and roads, and salmon have successfully spawned here for millennia. But something's changed. Before they can spawn, salmon in this Seattle Creek are dying. Coho salmon struggling in its final hours. Look at that. I mean, gasping for air. Fish don't gasp for air. People started finding these coho salmon that were dying full of eggs. It felt sort of like this mysterious illness. It was appalling. And as we were doing all this work trying to restore the habitat, they're dying in our backyard before they have a chance to use it. You know, what are we gonna do? It's all for naught. This alarming trend inspired two decades of research by scientists to identify the problem. And now, research by King County is bringing us another step closer to a potential solution. This is something we can actually do. And now we know how to do it. Salmon are a fixture of the Pacific Northwest. They lay their eggs in the gravel of stream beds. And then they die. After they hatch, baby salmon spend about a year in their stream to grow and become strong enough to survive in the ocean. Their bodies transform for salt water. They spend a year or two at sea, and near the end of their life, they return to the stream where they were born. Lay thousands of eggs in a new gravel nest, and the process begins again. All Pacific salmon, they live this whole life cycle, and they have one shot. You really rely on that boom of that single reproductive effort to keep the population going. So when researchers observed this process being cut short, entire generations of these fish gone, they did what researchers do. They began asking questions and looking for patterns. These die-off events, all of them really, were happening in really urban creeks, places where you have a lot of roads, the biggest source of pollution on roadways is vehicle-associated pollution. Our cars are home to all kinds of substances that aren't found naturally in the environment. There's windshield wiper fluid, exhaust from our tailpipes, our brake pads release brake pad dust, motor oil leaks from our engines, and when it rains, all of these pollutants get swept into stormwater and can wash into nearby streams. Researchers from Washington State University looked at all these sources of pollution, and the culprit was one no one expected. A breakthrough came when scientists started looking at tire particles. They would take these tire particles, soak them in water, expose that to fish, and that basically reproduced exactly what they would see when they would expose coho in particular to stormwater. Researchers from WSU and the University of Washington evaluated thousands of chemicals used in tires and eventually zeroed in on one. 6-PPD quinone. 6-PPDQ. It took two decades for local researchers to figure out that a chemical called 6-PPD quinone was responsible for killing salmon in urban streams. We're looking at a chemical that's used to keep tires from wearing. Without some remedial actions, you know, we're going to see local extinctions of those populations in, in decades. 6-PPD quinone is basically ubiquitous. If you have roads and you have cars on those roads, you're going to have tire particles and you're going to have 6-PPD quinone. Until such time as that's taken out of tires, what do you do to solve a problem that really is pervasive across our whole landscape? We knew going into the study that soil mixes could treat stormwater and be protective of coho, but at the time, we didn't have the analytical capability to confirm the removal of 6-PPDQ. To test this question, the King County Environmental Lab collected stormwater from urban roads. The raw stormwater turned out to be much more toxic than we were anticipating. Then, a team at Western Washington University experimented with soil columns filled with some surprising organic ingredients. One soil column contained a mixture commonly used in rain gardens. 
60% sand and 40% compost. They compared it to a different mix, 70% sand. You need like a backbone that can rapidly infiltrate water, otherwise you get flooding. 20% coconut coir, waste product from the coconut industry to remove contaminants and also support plant life and 10% biochar. It's kind of similar to what you have in a Brita filter. Contaminants really like to stick to them. To polish it off, a mix of sand, iron aggregate, and aluminum is engineered to collect the most evasive pollutants. Like nutrients, metals too. They mixed up all these ingredients and poured the toxic stormwater through each mixture to see how much 6PPDQ would be removed. The standard rain garden mix removed a lot of 6PPDQ, over 96%. But the mix with the coconut coir and biochar did even better, often producing water with no detectable 6PPDQ. I like exclaimed out loud, my jaw dropped, I got this huge grin on my face and I thought like, this is one of those moments that you kind of live for as an environmental scientist. You just don't get those kinds of numbers in science very often. We actually have the smoking gun, and now we have the data demonstrating we know how to disarm it. And so we know how to save the salmon. We just need to do it. To start, King County is mapping roadways to identify six PPDQ hotspots. You have to consider factors like the number of vehicles that use a road, the size of vehicles that use a road, and whether the stormwater washing off of that road will end up in a salmon-bearing stream. If it's going to hit a ditch and carry on downstream, we might as well have some soil there that's designed specifically to clean it. So it's not going to hurt fish, it's not going to hurt wildlife, and it's not going to hurt us. We keep repeating the same pattern and the same story where we'll have some new industrial chemical that's really useful for something. And it will get released into the environment with not too much concern over contamination. Coho salmon, they're telling us there's something wrong. There's something that needs to be addressed here. So it died before it was able yes. to spawn. Which probably means it's six PPDQ. I think salmon are giving us this opportunity to address this problem now, rather than wait and see how bad is this really. What we do in nature is essentially what we do to ourselves. We are not separable from our environment. And if we want to stay healthy, we have to keep our environment healthy too.